Welcome to Android App Addicts, episode number 30. I almost messed up the own title of the show, my own title of the show. Android App Addicts, episode number 30, where we do, uh, we bring Android apps to the table. Apps you may not have heard about and um, may be enlightened by, let's say. I mean, um, these are apps that we find during the week, we use in our lives and, uh, and help us along, or they're just cool, or they're just dumb, or there's just something re to remark about. Then we'll do hit some Android news real quick, and then I'll, I'll read your emails. If there's any voicemails, we'll play them too. And helping me with this task is our co-hosts, the Door-to-Door -door Geek, Steve McLaughlin from DoorToDoorGeek.com. Hey, Door. Hey, man. What is happening with you, my friend? Uh, I'm rubbing this patch thing on my arm a lot, hoping it stimulates it so I don't commit murder. <laughs> okay. So you quit smoking. I thought you said the gum, yeah. though. I must have missed heard you twice in well, a row. Well, both. Both. Yeah. I'm, I follow Chris Barr's example most of the time. And his example was you do the patch, and then when you think you're going to strangle someone, punch someone, or shoot someone, stick a piece of gum in your mouth. Has it been working? I didn't take the gum yesterday. I was seeing how long do I really need the gum? How long do I really need the gum? And I was a complete lunatic expletive yesterday. So, but did you smoke? No, 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 no. Good, no. good. Well, that's, no. that's it. Works. It's working. The only the only giving about the gum, it takes like three minutes, and then the back of your throat starts to tickle. So now I've been drinking even more beverages. Oh man, you're just like sugaring up. <laughs> All right, I know. Tim Kelly from Tim's Computer Fix dot com. Hey Tim. Hey, Steve. How about it? How's it going, everybody? How is it going with you? Doing good, man. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. All right. William Tidwell. From... How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm I moved the camera myself. to him too. I thought he was going to sneeze or something. William Tidwell from LiamTech.com. L-I-A-M-T-E-K.com. What's up, William? Definitely not pulling a Madonna. What do you mean? That, that, you guys kind of gave me some crap on one of the shows recently. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. About his name. <laughs> oh, you know, no, that's right. I like it. Well, I'm, I don't know. Are you Liam or are you William now? You tell. That me. depends. Uh, in what capacity do I know you? Well, you tell me. <laughs> Where do we fit in to your life? Are you Liam or? You'd crap if you knew I went by a third name, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so my name is William Mason Tidwell. Um, my parents. I've always gone by Mason. They didn't want to name me Mason William because of the guitar player, okay. Mason Williams. Right. Because, of course, you've heard of him since he had that one-hit wonder. I never heard of him. Well, I, I, what hit was it? Classical Gas. He's just a guitar player. Okay. I mean, it's just, just guitar. Okay. So uh, my day-to-day -day name is Mason, and I go by William for the computer repair, and then I, I thought of the whole Liam Tech thing. So right. when I get down there and settle, I'll be going by Liam, except for people that already No, no, me. no. You got this far. You got to make a Podnuts name now. We, I don't want to use any of your other used names. I want a new name for, for us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Just messing with what? you. Let's, uh, let's start off with Door to Door Geek today. Well, Door, what do you want to talk about? Well, are we going to introduce Timster? Yeah, yeah, I did. Hey, everybody. Hey, Door. Didn't I hey, introduce man. him? Are you guys messing with what? me? What? What happened? I don't think you did. I mean, I, I am brain dead. I don't remember that uh, part. Yeah, I think I think that gum door is really... Oh, yeah, door, man. Door, you door, are door. Shut insane. Up. Hey, no, how's it going, I mean, Steve C? You dude, made, I, I, seriously, no, you I made know, me go through... I know how you feel, buddy. Don't don't worry about it. I, <laughs> I, hey, you're, you're a psychological wreck here for the next several weeks. <laughs> Can we uh, all just get along? All right, we're, we're going to cut door some slack this episode. <laughs> okay, but if you, you, you thought... I, I made me think I was crazy there for a second. All right, Dur, let's take that again. What would you like to talk about today, tonight? Hey, hey, Steve, I got some good ads <laughs> over here. <laughs> good. Um, for a while, I was looking for a good, cheap, or free. And since now we have the 15-minute window to test stuff, I'm really hesitant to buy anything as a little bit of protest. But the same token, I need more than 15 minutes. So I was looking for a good profile-based action thing because and there's a little bit of trickery that has to go with this like when i'm out front of my house i want my wi-fi to turn on when i'm a block away from my house in one of two directions or because there's only two directions i can go i want my wi-fi to turn off so when i'm coming home it's 
if it's off, it's going to say, well, coming past, oh, it's off, and then it comes here and then on. And when I'm leaving the house, even if it's already on, it's going to click and say on, and then when I'm down the street, it'll say off. I had one application I found that I don't even want to mention because it made me so upset. The only options were turn Wi-Fi on or change Wi-Fi, which makes no Wait. sense. What? What about location settings? Was does that not fill the bill for you? Location settings where? Location settings. It's a, it's an application. It's I honestly tried that one. There was a couple things about it I didn't really like. The one I'm using now is called Profile Valet. Uh, it seems pretty dynamic. The thing I like about it is the level of actions you can do. You can even launch applications from it. You can do a lot of different stuff from it, and it was very easy to set up. Where the last one I had, Location Bot, I think it was, it was some weird name. It was very finicky about distances, where you would put in a distance and then it would want to say 500 meters anywhere by this distance. 500 meters is a big range. You know, I didn't yeah. like that. I've been using this one now for like four days. Zero issues, zero hiccups, very easy to enable or disable things. You can also do it by time, location. There was a third option that I can't remember. <laughs> and I don't want to change it. I don't want to change it on my phone. Oh, like on-demand actions. So you could literally group things to say, turn on Bluetooth, turn on Wi-Fi, and, and turn on this app all with one click or one location or on a time basis. It, so it, it does work. It knows where you are, and it turns on Wi-Fi according to where you are on the earth. Well, and I like the fact it says Wi-Fi on or off, Bluetooth on or off, ringer, you can set the volume, notification, you can set the volume. You can even have it change the ringtone. So when I get, let's say, for instance, when my wife calls, the Star Wars Death March comes on. <laughs> but when I come <laughs> home, I want that to change. Really? You have it set like that? I love how he, do you see how he looked in the other room before he said that? <laughs> oh, you know, you know, yeah, you know. But I got to say, this is to me, I've I found the most versatile, free, location-based app that actually at least is location-specific and not, a radius of a quarter mile you know okay so i i've enjoyed this i'm not gonna say this is the final answer on this but to me this is a, a top-notch solution i like it i've been looking for something like this awesome. yeah did you it, say this was free i might have to yeah try it it's free as in beer i think the saying goes i don't know um the next one i'm not gonna lie uh tracy holtz the man i get more good info from him than honestly any individual. Uh, we use Heytel, which is that Nextel-like but less annoying application where you can easily send voice messages, and when they gets yeah. to the other side, they just get a notification. I gotta install that with my new my new uh, ROM. I forgot. Yeah, and, and I'll add. I think it uses the Speaks codec because I've me and Tracy. I have literally said like. Hello, Tracy. And literally three seconds later, he'll say, yep. So the speed at which this audio is transferred is absolutely insane. Wow. Um, and that's why I like it. But he just told me about this app. And this is the kind of app. First, I want to preface it with this. High definition TV. I still don't have one. Um, but I have a enhanced definition. But hey, okay, high definition TV. You got cable, you have satellite, you have Fios, okay? Those are the three main ways people get TV. The best high definition you can possibly get is not with any of those three sources. It's, it's with over the air. And here's the reason why. All those three sources have very limited bandwidth. And for high definition, you literally need 18 megabytes a second room with over the air there is no tube that you have to fill in with other stuff you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's just a signal coming from a tower this application it's called tv and tv antenna helper um there is almost no easier way i think i've ever seen to find out 
how you need to do it. It's actually called TV antenna helper free. Sorry. Very sweet. You can either type in an address, go on the map, drag it around, pick an address, or just hit, I'm here now, hit the button, use this location. It will list all of the um, possible TV stations in range, and it always says more than you want. You know what I mean? I only want three or four. It gave me eight. You know? Wow. And it tells you the direction of which to aim your antenna, because most of the time, we need directional antennas for the best results, which means there's one of two things you gotta do. You gotta either get an antenna that has a control where you literally can program set points A, B, C, and D. Yeah. For, so for the best results for channel two, you go to A. For channel 35, you go to B kind of thing. Um, and you can literally sit on your roof with this application and with the Compass app, you'll know exactly where to aim your antenna and Tracy said, he, he said, quote, I'm so anal. I went on my roof. I was three degrees off. When I went back downstairs, I had a better picture. <laughs> so this really is a very, very, very functional application. I say. love it, man. Two apps I use. I've been getting over-the-air HD for years. But people think I'm nuts when I talk about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, because oh, they don't believe it. It, it looks great because you don't. Awesome. You don't. As long as it's encoded properly, you do have a lot more bandwidth. Um, and to be fair, it really depends on whether what the cable company or the satellite company is doing. Like some small cable companies, they've got the bandwidth. They can put one HD channel per actual EIA. An EIA is the actual channel number. Um, you can put multiple channels on one of those. Um, so if they're only putting one on there, you really have the bandwidth to be able to do it right. But most of the companies are going to multiplex those into one channel uh, is that where we get the dash so, three dash one three dash two three dash three yeah okay. yeah those are the sub channels um the well, eia is going to be the the main number before the dash well, be, be warned so that it's that it's localized done, i right, mean yeah, it depends on the area there, you're in yeah tim yeah. say again i said just just be aware though not all areas can uh, have that capability the more remote right. areas you know it, it's not it's not uh it won't it won't work too well that's why we have doors right. app well it's, exactly yes. Well, but here's what here's how Tim starts exactly right. Back in the day, analog TV signals would go out and then it would slowly de degrade to where you could still see a picture. It still might be perfectly fine to you, even though it did technically get worse. With digital TV, it, it works and then it stops working, yeah. period. So there is a shorter range. Oh, that's a that is a nightmare. If you get yeah. a if you have a weak digital signal, just shoot me. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah with like you said, with analog you get a little fuzz, you know, this picture's not right. as good with digital, you get blip, 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 blip. Oh, can't stand that. Yep. And I'll just say with Scott Wilkinson, who honestly, I don't listen to many TV guys because I don't know many TV guys. <laughs> what he said is your typical dish provider can only pipe down two true HD signals at a whack. Your cable provider can do something like one true HD and then like four or five enhanced definitions. And he said what they typically do is they they like actively change it to where Discovery Earth or whatever will be one of the premier HD channels that you get. And then during Monday Night Football, that picture will technically get worse because okay. they're giving more bandwidth to that. Wow. They're so lame. I know. So if you don't watch what everybody else watches, you're going to suffer. Damn. If you're on those. I, I like Scott Wilkinson. I like how I think he tells it how it is. I honestly think the reason I like him is he will slam companies with no hesitation. Yeah. He don't care. Exactly. And, right. And then he will tout how a company is doing something absolutely right. You yeah. Know? Like he recommends a DVD player I never heard of. I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you the name of it Um, uh, for a Blu-ray. Yeah. So, yeah, he doesn't go with the big guys if he, if they're not as good. Right. And I would really love to have his job. Yeah, that's fun, man. Mm. That's fun. Yeah. Um, all right, man, do you got anything else? Any yeah. other apps, I mean? Yeah, those two were free. This one is actually two, and it's not free. It's a two-parter because you have to download Ty, um, Titanium Backup Root which is free. 
and then you have to purchase a secondary key and that's called Ty, um, titanium backup pro key um and here's the thing why okay titanium backup on its own great application powerful application slow also if you're like me and you really like loading roms the worst thing you can do is load a rom and as soon as you load it go through the first time setup and log into google because as soon as you log into google no matter what connection you have it's going to start to download every application you had on your phone i have 220 something applications so it takes an easy hour no matter even if i'm even if i'm on wi-fi easy hour to re-download everything with the free titanium backup it will not do uh one click restores it will literally stop at each application and say do you want to restore do you want to restore do you want to restore so that took a long time as well the other advantage to titanium pro is there's actually a couple one it uses a tuned sql light engine which means the application itself is much faster much faster two one click restores so as soon as i ROM a phone i skip logging into google i go to my sd card i install my titanium apk and my um, key apk and then i open up the app and i say restore all and then you know 10 minutes later maybe i have all my applications reloaded with all the configurations to all those apps right back like nothing happened Sweet. and a new os nice um, here's well, the third thing. Oh, sorry, Tim, sir, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, now the third thing that I don't use, and I can't explain why I don't know, is it also has the ability to back up to Dropbox, which I got to say, we as users of these devices and fans of these devices should not put a lot of faith in a, in a micro SD card. Sooner or later, they will fail. So having the off device backup let's say with two clicks one to launch the app one to say do it kind of thing is very nice the bad part is it's uh six dollars and 13 cents they raised the price when i bought it was 589 on app rate is 581 but i guess I, i'm in oh. the market they changed it might be changed in the actual market yeah in the android market six dollars and 13 cents Okay. Well, Dora, what about the negative part of titanium backup? Because was it last week or maybe the week before I had brought it up and you well, liked it, but you didn't because... Well, it doesn't it, back up anything on the SD card. So none bingo. of your pictures, none of your movies. It's just for apps and configuration to apps. Okay. Well, so, it, it isn't, yeah. so it isn't a complete answer, not even close to a complete answer. But if you'd because, like to you know, bomb your phone name, a lot... It's named right? titanium backup, you would think... You know, one would right. think it would back up everything. But... Oh, I know. No, no, you have to get the, the platinum backup right. to get that. I don't know, man. Uh -huh. I used one called my backup. <laughs> Worked out pretty well. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Um, oh, now, right. now, I'm just going to add one more thing about the application. I hope I don't need a piece of gum because I can't remember it now. Um, yeah, I had one extreme failing with this application. And if I would have, let's say, transported through time to the last couple of weeks and listened to Timster, I wouldn't have had that problem. I went to the phone as soon as I bought the thing, right? I'm going to do, do this hood. I went into titanium backup, moved to SD, select all. Why not? <laughs> Bang. Hit select all. Phone was able to boot, okay? Was able to boot. In my application drawer i'm supposed to have 200 applications i had three okay i could not click on an apk file and install it the phone was basically utterly pointlessly useless there was nothing i could do with it now what i found out later after the fact was and it might have been something to do with the fact that i have 200 and something applications but on the root of the SD card, there was two folders, T-E-M-P and T-M-P. Don't ask me why there's two of them, temp, but there's two of them. One of them was filled on the 16 gig card with like eight gigs of files. 
Now, every app on the phone doesn't even equate to two gigs. So I have no idea, but it basically like filled up the folder and just went ballistic. So I then deleted all the files in those two folders, put the card back in my phone because I had to take it out. I booted it. Then I was able to actually install from an APK. But either way, I was too upset. I basically just ROM the phone again and I let Google restore all my applications. So that's the one time where this app <laughs> failed me bad. Damn. It really uh, uh, made me quite, quite upset at the application. So, and I, so this application failed to even do what it's designed to do. And you're going to bring it on here so that we can well, no, no. all get hosed by it, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. So no, awesome. Not, my hey, name's not this, Steve D. This tastes really my name's bad. Not Try Steve it. D. My name's not Steve D. It does do a backup just fine. I was trying yes. to make it do it. Backups are useless testing. unless you can restore from them. Well, this was as soon as I bought the app and I didn't do a backup yet. I first wanted to move to SD. Thinking oh, I that, gotcha. that was the first mistake. So really, right. Dor, you just make it a public service announcement. <laughs> Thank you, Timster. Mr. Clutch, Mr. Clutch. What he's saying oh. is RTFM. <laughs> well, yes and no. It should not be a feature in there, or it really should give you a warning. This is another example I want to give. I emailed this developer. I got nothing back. There's been no change to the app. I really don't like that at all <laughs> now on the inverse the creator of widget locker that lock screen customizable app where you can have custom sliders icons all kinds of stuff i had an issue with that application i rom the phone with apex i then installed revolution theme those two combination of things in hindsight made it when i was at my lock screen for the widget locker i had to slide unlock and then slide unlock again Okay. I emailed him <laughs> less than two and a half hours later. He emailed me back and he asked me for details on the phone. Da, 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 da. And he, and he basically held my hand to get my phone back up and running. That's what a developer is supposed to do. No, I'm it's not. I no, it's not. I mean, if, yeah. I, anyway, here's the, here, here's what I'm trying to say. Customer service is key, but the developer should have somebody do that for him. I mean, like, well, I mean, if he's, you know, he's got to keep developing. He's the brains. Somebody's got to, well, he needs an administrative staff. Okay. I'll say this. I never validated it was the developer. It could have been anybody. Okay. It could have been Grandpa Joe. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just stretching uh, it. But I think that, you know, the developer, if they, a, a developer should put together a nice little staff, keep his mind on the developing part, keep the apps flowing. Yeah. I mean, but of course, if you're a one man show, I'm just saying. Right. I and I in, that. And in hindsight, I should have known something was wrong with the theme because it took me like 20 minutes to notice, but my home button stopped working. I would hit home and I wouldn't go home. <laughs> okay. So I guess I should have noticed. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dor. We're going to move you on. You know what, Dor? I've got an application that might fix that home button, but home button doesn't go home issue for you. Nope. Nope. Tried it. Because remember, Did I'm you? the one that gave you that app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, button, it's still a good app. segue, so screw you. <laughs> Go ahead, William. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Um, so if you look at the chat there, it's uh, called Button Remapper. Basically, you can take any of your hardware buttons and reassign them to whatever you want. Um, when I went with the Droid X, I completely replaced my <laughs> iPod. Um, love it. Except for one thing, there's no easy way to pause it without having the screen on all the time. I don't want to have to have the screen on. Um, so now what I've done is I, f I found Button Remapper. It lets you remap in, like say, any of the buttons, whether it's a, a quick push or a push and hold, whether the the phone's awake or asleep, screen off, basically. Um, you do have to be rooted. Um, basically, so I took my, uh, my search button, because I never use my search button anyways. And remapped it so if I push it, it play or pauses, depending on which media player I've been using last. Cool. Well, quick question: does the, does it do it to the media player and to your podcast player? It'll do it to whichever one you were last using. Oh, so nice. so for instance, here's Linux for the rest of us. Pause, play, pause, 
Play. Neat. Turn it off. Pause. Well, how do you do that on the iPod? It has That's a pause. Sweet. iPod has an external pause button. Well, I I was still on the old one with the click wheel. Oh, okay. So right. you just push. I'm used right. to doing that. Right. So I can just reach up without looking. So I mean, does it? Can you remap like your stop buttons? Like you can remap any button available. So like so like if I hit my top power button, I can map that just to be the camera. I'm sure you could. You could I remap could. the power button even. I'm yeah. sure you can. Let me look yeah. in there real quick. Look in the uh, second screen. That's what they're yeah, showing. Yeah, see that. Uh, yeah. Power. Now, Look here's my map. question, William. Do you know the difference between wake and wake dropped in the state? That's one I of the options. I tell you. Um, it's been a long time since I played with it. I basically just got it working like I wanted and haven't messed with it since. Gotcha. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's great. It, it It solved the biggest problem I had with this thing. Very good, man. Awesome, William. Like that one. You got any more? So now we're going to do a little bit of a hardware review. Okay. So this is the car dock. For the Ra raise it, raise it higher. Yeah, with the magnet in it. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. This thing is freaking great. Car dock for the for the Droid X made for yep. the Droid X. Yeah, made for the Droid X. And so it's got wrong. Oh, oh okay. man, I thought my bracketron was does nice, it, but that thing takes. Does it? Can you spin it vertical? You can does spin it, it any which way you want. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And now, how, how does it awesome. mount? How does it mount? Awesome. Um, you've got the suction cup, so you can do the glass thing, or it comes with the little disc, the hockey puck, so that you can double stick tape it to whatever you want and just slap I'm it in. You, any, anybody cool. that doesn't have one one a car mount for their for their uh, Android phone, uh, you're missing a. I think a big, huge uh, part yeah, of owning. Huge. I know. I was, I was just thinking about that today, how I love my Bracketron. Yeah, that's what Timster told me when I got my phone. He said, if you don't get a car mount, you are only using half of your phone. I Absolutely. didn't completely understand him until I got a car mount. Yeah. You can text while you're driving. <laughs> no, you can, <laughs> you can hell talk or whatever it's called. Yeah. Hell, a hell talk. Sweet. Awesome, yeah, um, Here's my amazing. question, the William. I, I, I lived off of my droid for the past week. Um, I, I drove to Texas and drove to Texas, moved my family. Um, I had this mounted in the, the truck that we took. It was my navigation. It was my phone, texting, whatever, whatever needed to be done. I could angle it over so my kid could watch a movie. It's got the charger built in in the back, so you plug it in, it automatically starts charging. The only thing it's really missing is the headphone jack, and that's just the way the droid is designed. There's no way that you can slap it in and have the headphone jack over here hook in automatically, but they include a little cord keeper, so you just slap it in, plug it on, or if you're Bluetooth, whatever. I mean, the thing is great. It's worth every penny. I bought a second one for my wife because I just got her the Droid X as well. Um, we're huh? moving to a new town. She needs something better for navigation. How much is something it? Here. The the dock? Yeah. Up. 29 bucks if you buy Sweet. it from straight from them. I'm sure you can find it cheaper online, right. 22, 23 bucks. If but, you go to amazon.com forward slash podnuts, you can find it for the low, low. Yes. Or podnuts.com slash Amazon. slash Amazon. Either one. Pre oh, prefer wow. Preferably the second one. Preferably <laughs> yeah. the second one. I think the second Tim's one. Must have, Tim's must have quit smoking too. <laughs> oh, but, uh, no, I think thanks, Dor, Tim. you had a question. Yeah, Dor, you said you had a question for William. Oh, yeah. I, I know when I first got my droid, the car dock that is initiated with the battery on, not the battery, the magnet on the, the um, car dock was inaccessible unless you had a magnet. Are you finding that with most of the car docks? Because I know you've also uh, rommed your phone, right? Right. No, I'm not. Um, you even just have a, an application called Car Home that's the exact same thing. Okay, because when There's I know I first had my home. phone, I could not access the car dock that popped up when the magnet was there. The original blur one's a little different than car home. Um, I don't recall if that one was only activated by the magnet. William, you're sliding out of view. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted to take a piece of super glue on my six dollar from podnuts.com slash Amazon car mount and just super <laughs> glue a magnet to the back of it. 
because I'm I did that or... with uh, my original my well my the original droid I had I had one of the just a cheesy uh, car dock and it had a rubberized thing rubber foam on the back I actually just cut a piece of it out right size for a magnet put it in there and it's all polarity of the magnet too whether whether right. it goes into multimedia mode or car mode um, so if you're getting the wrong one you can just flip it over but it fit perfect in there and same thing like door sand but just having something that's built for the phone the right way is so much easier this actually has a, uh, a snap-in piece so you can pull out there's an, actually a uh, a uh, phone case that's compatible with this with so you oh. take that out and you put a phone case in there. Um, I didn't get one of those. I I don't I don't use cases. Oh I'm yeah, okay. I, I knew I knew there was something. You can't use that with a case, right? Well, only with certain cases. With this one. But here's the thing. My wife has a case on hers. I don't want her having to take the case off every single time. Yeah. She loads it into hers. So the Dremel in ten minutes and. It works with whatever case you want. <laughs> the Dremel. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could. I could. I could. Good do that. man. You yeah. get points for that. Definitely. I like that. Awesome. You ought to make a video of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> video everything, guys. It's the thing to do these days. Not right, everything. <laughs> William, do you have anything else you want to go over <laughs> right now? Any other so, apps? Uh, or no news yet? We save news to the end. No, I don't have any news. Okay. So I've got a. A program called RingDroid. I don't know if you guys have covered it or not. I didn't look, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, basically, you can take any audio file and you can cut it up and make it into your own ringtone. So if you you got a song on your phone you like, but it doesn't play at the part you want to, you can do that. I don't think we talked about it. No, I don't think so either. It works pretty well. It's pretty pretty decent for just kind of real quick editing. It works a lot like, uh, what is it, Audacity? I yeah, believe. yeah, it looks like it. Cool. Yeah, I actually did use it in like the first like month I was on the phone and it is if you have any common sense, I'll say you can use this app. It's that easy. Yeah, yeah for sure. What if you don't have any? Then you better ask uh like then you're, your then you're on an son. iPhone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Jeez. Uh, anything else, William? Ouch. Uh here's one. It's just called floating image. Now that one we did go over, but that was that's old school. So let's talk about it again. We did go over. So, so damn, so what? damn. Yeah, I, I, let the man wait, speak. I let know. I man. said I would never say anything. I just, I, I, I messed up. Like, oh, sorry, geez. dude. <laughs> go ahead, William. <laughs> so that one, uh, since we've gone over it before, basically just for showing off your images, and you know, you get your HDMI hooked up to your phone, to your TV. Can you hold it up and show us a floating demo? I don't, I don't have it installed right now. Okay. I, I had it at one point. I was You're just looking Steve through the D, stuff man. That <laughs> yeah, that I liked floating image. I used it like you know, you, like you probably did for three minutes and thought, <laughs> thought it was thought it was cool. Brought it to the show and on with life. <laughs> and so the <laughs> final one I have is called Tech News. I know this one hasn't been on. At least it's not in the uh, in the Hoozy there. You know, Hoozy. That's that's technical. <laughs> it's by Barris EFE. Basically, it's just kind of a compilation of all the tech type rss stuff so uh if you want to go in and look at life hacker but you hate their effing site because they changed it now it sucks it really does you can go Dude. in here and you can just look through all the news that's a, a nice one site. yeah very nice layout easy to read looks like an actual piece of paper it's pretty cool huh. at least until they change it you've got to go over on the right hand side to scroll through the articles and you have to go back to the left hand side to actually read it the second picture is Dig. I thought Dig was dead. I don't. <clears throat> I don't use it. I don't know anybody that's used it in like months, like twenty years. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm being nice. I'm being nice. <laughs> Just kidding. Um. All right. And Anything I else, to, William? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the tech news. I did get that from somebody else. Just today, matter well, of fact. Is it good? I mean, uh, do, do you like the uh, stories that are in it? Oh yeah. I mean, it's just all the stuff off there. Their RSS feed, I imagine. All right. I never knew. Yes, about dog the catcher show. is the best for podcasts. Oh, indeed, testify. Absolutely. Hey, hey. All righty. Are we over to Timster now, William? Over to you, Timster. Over to me. Didn't okay. we already do Timster? Oh wait, no. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, by the way, hello Choose everybody. Some more hello, Steve. How are hello, you? Hello, Steve. <laughs> yes, I'd so like to introduce now. Timster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to call this out now. 
I'm going to mention an app that has been talked about. Uh, but actually, um, Surprise. honestly, the, the, I think a while back I was talking about some guy that was like spamming me, like calling me and texting me on my phone. Oh yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. annoying. And uh, I figured out. I think Acid Burn turned me on to the fact that I could go uh, to uh, Verizon's website and block that number, which right. was really cool. The first thing that I was doing was digging around trying to find a freaking app that I can do that with, but none right. existed at that time. Right. Well, we talked about something called Mr. Number Caller ID, which allows you to turn mystery numbers into names, uh, you know, and always to know who's calling you or texting you. But now Mr. Number also has come out with a with a uh, Mr. Number call block. Oh. So it's just a simple app that you can actually block incoming calls and text messages. Ooh, and it works. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it works. Uh, I know, I know it works. My, uh, I tried, tried calling on my mother-in-law's phone. I mean, um, he hasn't answered me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, hey, do you guys have AAA? And I don't mean Android app addicts. No, I don't. Do you, do you, do you have AAA auto roadside service? No. Anybody? No. no? Oh, man, you should. You're going to wish you did one day. <laughs> no, <laughs> I have threat? family. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I've, 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 I'm glad I have mine. I renew it. It's really relatively expensive. You know, it's like 125 bucks for a year, but you have like, you know, all kinds of towing, uh, benefits. Can I pirate it? And, <laughs> but, um, uh, there is an Android app that, uh, that is for roadside assistance. Now I've used the, um, I've used the online service where you go online and you, if you're, if your car breaks down and, and you're lucky to be around a computer, you don't have to use your phone. You can just go right in, use your computer. You fill out a little form online, you submit it. And within uh, 30, 45 minutes, you know, you have someone showing up there to help you. Well, now uh, AAA has come out with a Android app to where you just hit a big button on the top that says, uh, uh, help me. I see what does it actually say? It says, Help me, Obi Wan so Kenobi. What it says. Big green button. Request road service. You hit that button, and boom, you're automatically in. You just fill out a few simple uh, questions, and and, uh, and and you'll you'll get service that way. Um, now, my you know my question is kind of silly. I mean, you're using a phone to fill out a form. I mean, you know, you could just call, <laughs> but uh, at any rate, it just gives you another option. But the reason why I brought that up is because. The AAA also has another app called AAA Discounts. This is really good because there are quite a few discounts you get with having AAA and being a member in, uh, of AAA. Uh, and so basically, it uses your GPS and it maps where you're at, and then it flags every business location in your in around your area that 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 um, accepts AAA for discounts. So that begs the question: Do you accept AAA for discounts in your repair shop? I do not accept AAA for discounts. Because you could offer... show up on that map with a simple, you know, 5% discount. True. That is Maybe true, somebody's rolling it? through town and you have emergency service available. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's not a bad I idea know. at all. I'm, I'm, just, I was really. thinking. I'm happy it's... somebody's thinking because I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Dude. Well, thanks for that, man. I think I'll uh, look into that. <laughs> yeah, and you let us know because that's a great idea. Okay. <laughs> I'm just that, too busy. Yeah, All right. right. Great well, idea that William's not going to uh, do. Chris Berry thought of it, but he doesn't Let give discounts, okay. so he wouldn't do it. Let me tell you something that's not a great idea. Uh -oh. Okay. Um, I don't know where to start. With, uh, uh, first of all, um, Steve Podnuts is not responsible for any such and such, blah, 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 <laughs> may occur for this. You know my same service announcement that I'll give. No, no seriously, if you have any children around – Put them in another room. If you have any nuns or priests, if you, any, 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 anybody that gets offended. For external use only. Go to, I would go in a closet. Okay. If, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> here's, here's what happened. Uh, somebody turned me on to this app in, in TeamSpeak, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, it's, it, it, if you see this app and download it, <laughs> What if is thinking it? about downloading it? Just be in, a, in an area where nobody else can hear your phone. And I made the mistake of, of, of loading this app up with the uh, 
with my speaker, I guess, <laughs> wide open. And um, it's, it's called, and if you go to this, if you go to the market, you'll see it even looks shady. It's called CB Radio Chat. And, you know, it sounds simple. You're like, wow, you know, CB Radio. It turns your phone into a CB Radio. It even says it. CB Radio <laughs> Chat is a live voice communicator. Okay, that sounds simple enough. So, um, well, let me tell you, I have never heard the most vile and offensive <laughs> language <laughs> over open airwaves, seriously, in my life. Um, it was just, it, it totally and completely offended me. It, it is the most vile language you will ever hear on open on, on open radio on open airwaves and it blasts right through your freaking phone if you I don't got have a solution your radio for you there Timster. What's you that? attend the post show more often you wouldn't get as offended uh, as easily no, dude, i'm going to tell you something the post show is kindergarten <laughs> compared to the stuff the here post show is so. kindergarten <laughs> so, so what, what are these what is it truckers talking to each other what is it what is it, it? I, it is it's an open cb communication area and and the default channel is the most offensive one and there's other channels in there like uh traffic and and you know um school i mean there's there's all sorts of other subjects Let's see if i can see what else they have on here eh, pull it up real quick when well, no, it might start blasting um, well how, how I re i'm reading the reviews to see what other people think and, and hallie <laughs> says it's good but a pervert called pov keeps stalking me <laughs> Look at this. News, politics, religion. I can't even believe they say that. It starts off on the general <laughs> tab, and it is, it's an open mic, basically, uh, for, for anybody um, that uses CB radio, CB airwaves. Um, so, you know, uh, only the faint of heart go there. I mean, I wouldn't even recommend going there. Uh, uh, you know, that probably that's going to make everybody flock to it, but... But, uh, yeah, see, they're talking already. I didn't even mean to do that. Yeah, right. Um, anyway, just just to warn everybody, there's another app called TeamSpeak that I like to pimp out. And basically, you install this on your Android device, and <clears throat> you can um, join TeamSpeak. With... I was going to say, don't, team, don't tease me, Timster. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What don't do you mean? It. Yes. What do you mean? Don't tease. Is this it. is this a voice client? <laughs> this is a this is a this is a all in one um, everything that you can view in Teamspeak. Is it Teamspeak viewer? Yeah, it's a Teamspeak viewer. <clears throat> uh, you know, don't yeah, don't like you say, door. Don't let it fool you. I was going to get to that, but um, what? it works. It's a great app. Um, fool you how? I don't get it. You don't get it. Well, you know, when you load it up, you're like, all right, I'm on TeamSpeak, and it, and it, and it looks like TeamSpeak, and you got your rooms and your people you see chatting, but you can't say anything, uh -oh. you can't type anything, you can't hear anything. <laughs> it's TeamWatch. It, basically, it's just a viewer, yeah. So, Team um, <laughs> Team Hey, stalk. I mean, for, if, if for some reason you'd like to know who's on TeamSpeak, that's the app to get. Uh, cool. But, well, it's good to know. I'm not going to say anything. It's good to know. They'll, I'm, they'll probably add functionality once they're... I don't know. TeamSpeak is proprietary technology. Oh, uh, I gotcha. Kind of like Skype. Uh, you know, there's no other Skype apps but Skype. That sucks. All right. Cool, Tim. Any other ones? Uh, no, that's it. All righty. Uh, let me do one quick one real here, fast here, and then uh, we'll do some emails. What I've been liking... Um, Nothing fancy, but what I've been using a lot is uh, well, I love Google Maps, and I use that, and it's kind of fun the new the new uh, vector features in it, and how you can. I'm not quite sure whether I like in Google Maps how you used to be able to pinch to zoom in and pinch to zoom out. Now every time I try to pinch with the new feature, it rotates. The map actually rotates, and I, don't, I actually don't need a rotating map. I'm I'm cool with just straight up and down. So that that bothers me. But what's what is cool about Google Maps? It's probably been on there a while but I haven't been using it, is the Google Maps traffic. Have you guys used this? Oh, yeah. Well, they did make one difference with the traffic where I believe now the uh, navigator will intelligently recalculate based upon traffic on the fly. But I got to say, I'm, like, I'm hooked every morning. When I'm leaving the house, I make sure GPS is turned on and my uh, screen stays lit in my $6 car holder. And then when I get down a certain part in the road, I go dink, dink, 
and turn over. I'm not hopping on 95 this morning. That's right. And just keep going. That's what I did today. I mean, well, there's, if you could see it, let me get it in there. So is that, I've always wondered, like, because like I say, I just use mine to navigate all the way to freaking Texas. Is when you're navigating, you have the little light in the lower left-hand corner that tells you time yeah. till your next um, event. Right. Sometimes it's green. Sometimes it's blank. Right. Sometimes it's other colors. Is that right. is that traffic? Yes. Yeah. Green. Uh, know? Green means okay. good. Uh, the orange means not good. The clear or gray means unknown. Oh. Right. I, I assume that's what it was. I I had green once. I saw yellow, and then sometimes it was just the no data. Well, I'm a doofus. I, I I've always assumed that's what it was, but I was never sure. I didn't know that. Well, this, it is, but I'm I want to see the lines. Yeah, this like, has got the traffic lines. Traffic is coming right. Oh, here it is. And I used it today to come home from work. I got green. There's green, yellow, and red. I avoided to all the work. red. No, I'm not working. Gosh, I keep saying that. No, I I was driving home today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, you didn't mention you have a, a job. I don't. I just, that's just twice I've done that. Um, the, uh, the, the red, I avoided all the red roads, got through fast, came home right on the highway. It was pretty awesome. Um, what, else, what did I want to say about that? Oh, one time uh, last week I was driving to uh, the next town over. It's called Lakewood, Lakeland, Lakeland. And um, I went on the highway and it was just, traffic totally totally backed up it turns out a truck caught on fire like an 18 wheeler and i'm like i'm just mad i'm sitting in traffic but when i finally got up to the point where i, I passed the thing i've never seen a truck com complete the truck was gone it was like <laughs> just the bottom and the wheels it was gone it was like nanobots ate it that's what it looked like um but point of the story is i didn't know what the problem was when i was in traffic i was just sitting there pissed off and google traffic told me that it was a truck william are you all right over there yeah okay that it was a truck on fire um and it gave details and you can actually submit like it told me what it thought the problem was while i was having traffic and then it asked me to confirm as a as a person sitting in the traffic it asked me to confirm if that's true or not so on Google Maps? On Google Traffic, yeah, it was awesome. So it takes wow. it takes input from people on the road. And uh, it I, guess I love that. Yeah, Ooh. so do I. I thought that was awesome. So um and it was pretty so, it was a pretty detailed report too, what it gave me. So Oh man. I like that. Um, Timster, the the backup I use, and I just I kind of just pulled this out of the market just because it looked like it had a couple good reviews and it was free is one called my backup and it worked for me when i was when i re-rommed my phone oh, here's a picture of it well it, they have a paid version too i'm not sure if i got the paid version i can't remember but um i no it is, it, it's actually just a free one and it worked good it's it's the little life raft looking thing the red thing there oh yeah i used that once yeah it worked good so that was the, actually have they actually have three of them my backup my backup pro and my backup root does it have my backup pod nuts no but they should <laughs> Um. That, anyway, that worked pretty good for me. All right, let's read some emails here. Real yes. Quick, yes. I want to put something out there. Um, there have been a lot of good applications that seem to be disappearing from markets. So yep. if any of you guys have those applications and you want them hosted, oh. send me an email or attachment, whatever. I'll put them on my site. I'm like I, I've got the 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 uh, the hacked Skype and a couple of others. Um, I'll just we can just start a thread even in the in the forums and put links in there and I'm glad to host them. I've got yeah, plenty I'll of space. Say, I searched for a week for the friggin' Skype that would work over 3G. Everyone I downloaded would not work, or it would I would hit dial and it would say boom end call. Hit dial boom end call. Hit dial. You already have two phone calls going. What? <laughs> and then I got the copy from. Liam, I've had four people now ask me, I can't find this. Here you go. Send it via email and they all say it works great. Ah, oh, cool. Well, and I tell you, there's a tip to finding applications that you can't find anymore. I would say search life hacker, but it's too difficult. <laughs> uh, Google site colon lifehacker.com space. Google search APK. I'm pretty sure it's all you got to type and it'll be in the top three or four. And it's basically how to use Google to search for APKs. And it's one of those super long strings, minus sign in title, plus sign in link, da, 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 and then at the very end, put what you're looking for. 
I've that's how I was able to find real HDMI because it's nowhere. So I will happily uh -huh. submit that. Very cool. Thank you, Dora. May I read the emails now, please? <laughs> All right, Brandon. Go forth with emails. <laughs> Brandon One more said, thing. <laughs> One more thing. Brandon says, uh, Steve, I want a tablet. The iPad 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi refurbished is 349 The Galaxy Tab is 499 at Best Buy. Have you bought the Galaxy Tab yet? If so, how is it? I'm going to break down and go buy it at Best Buy. I need help. <laughs> I can't decide. LOL. <laughs> um, Who's this from? It's from Brandon, and it looked like he decided. And then he said, I need help. Oh, buy it. He's going to buy it. One or the other. That is a tough one, Brandon. I mean, look, the iPad is tried and true. It has tons of apps, and it's very... Uh, it's very locked. It's very locked down. If you enjoy Android devices and then you go try to use an iPod, you feel like you're in a, an iPad. You feel like you're in a cage. I don't, I'm not a big fan of mine, but I'm happy I have one and I, I use it for what it can do. But I love the Galaxy Tab. I, I looked at it again today. I look at it almost every day. So I don't have it yet to answer your question, but I think it's awesome. So um, I would get the Tab. But if you've never, if you've never had an iPad. My oh, gosh, it just depends on what you want to do with the thing. It really does. Right. I, iPad is a great consumption device for, for Flipboard and reading news and feeds and stuff like that. The Galaxy Tab is like a big Android phone. So if you love doing stuff on your phone more than reading stuff. Yeah, he's he never said, does he own an iPhone? Does he own right. an Android phone? Right. And if he, if he likes an iPhone, if he likes it, he'll, right. he'll probably yeah. like the iPad. Mm -hmm. If yeah. he likes the Android phone, then he'll definitely like the the, the tab. The, the it really, it really will. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry. Tab is awesome. So you can beautiful. always return them, you know? Yeah. Tab's coming down, too. <laughs> on, if you get it on Verizon, it's $249. Ooh. You pay if you sign up for a two-year plan, but it's got to be the th the three gig or higher plan. So you're probably paying, it's 249 to walk out with a device. But you're probably paying sixty bucks a month on the uh, the plan. Yeah, and the only piece of related news: if you got the Zoom, you can send it back to them for free. You won't have it for six days, but it will come back with a free upgrade to e e utilize the LTE network. Yes, I did hear about that. But the Zoom's like eight hundred bucks. Oh, too much money. And it's it's, it's too much money. Yeah, it's a, it it's is too a big, big. The, the tab. Tab over the Zoom, and the Sprint tab is two ninety nine, and that's with the two year. If you get a two year plan for the two gigabytes download, which is twenty nine bucks a month. So Verizon, you're looking at two forty nine, but then it's sixty bucks a month. Month Ver Sprint is two ninety nine, but then it's only thirty bucks a month. Or you could just you buy them outright for like five hundred bucks. You that's the way to go for sure. Month? It's not the way. You think it's the way to go, really? I I want. I don't want to have to tether this thing every time I want to get internet. I don't know, man. I, I like the simplicity of having 3G built in. I do, do you like I your money? Pay through the notes. Well, look, I always look at it this way: two forty nine. Okay, that gives me if a month after that is thirty bucks. A month after that's thirty bucks. A month I, so I had it three. I would be having it about six months before I have to pay like five hundred bucks. I don't know. And then it, you've got eighteen months left on your contract. Yeah, yeah, but you don't have to finish contracts. You never have to finish contracts. <laughs> well, with Sprint, <laughs> with Sprint, See, you, buy you it don't. Out, right? Who finishes you can turn contracts? You around and sell it, too, though, to, to fund the next one. There you go. Yeah, you, well, there, there. You, you pay early termination fee, resell it, done. But once you've paid the early termination fee plus all your, your, uh, your data, you're already losing. So you might as well just buy it outright. You can well, sell you it. You had the enjoyment of having 3G uh, built in. Uh, to, and correct me if I'm wrong. Jerry Jones says... With Sprint, after one year, you can upgrade. Upgrade your phone upgrade or to device. What? So if like you have the tab from Sprint in one year, you can upgrade to a new tab if mm. you want. Nice. Or new See, now, if it's one year, that might be approaching the point where it's worth it. I don't know. You go past one year, early termination fees are under 100 bucks. No way. For you, Dude. not for me. Where? Really? Who? Really? Not for me. Really? <laughs> okay, we had three phones on our plan. We had four months left. They wanted to charge me seven hundred plus dollars. Yeah. Oh well, that no. I'm talking about yeah, one. Yeah, I, I believe with Verizon, yeah. it depends on whether it's a, a regular phone, a feature phone, a smartphone. Yep. Whether yeah. you're on a data package, it, it's tiered. Yeah. Well, I'm the just. I'm, I guess I'm just gonna have to find out then. 
Yeah. The All B right. is for Vendetta. <laughs> All right. Caleb writes to us. Hey, Caleb. He says, hey, guys, I'm looking for a cheaper Android tablet that isn't well-known, and I was wondering what you would recommend. Being a developer with a CDMA Milestone, a.k.a. Original Droid, and soon to have a, ga- a Samsung tab, I'm looking for some- Oh, he's going to have a tab. I'm looking for something a little less known. Right. I was looking on Newegg and saw a few for around 100 150 bucks. I was thinking about getting one, but I'm worried about a few things. First, what are the modding communities like for lesser-known devices? Second, will they come with the market pre-installed, or will it need to to push it over ADB. Third, which is the best built device, hardware strength and actual power. Both of the first things aren't major issues, but they'd be nice to know a little bit more about, but the hardware durability is a must. I'm very physically rough on my devices. I and see, uh, that's the wild card. Thanks for another awesome show, Caleb. P.S. Android App Addicts will always be known as AAA to me, no matter what Leo Laporte puts out, even though he's, <laughs> even though he's pretty awesome too. Um, I have yeah, enough to see. There is so many crap devices for Android out there right now. I mean, <laughs> tablets. Like well, uh, you got the is it Craig makes a crappy one. Um, yeah. Gen Touch makes a crappy one. There's one Very from e- Elocity, which is mm-hmm. it's it's pretty durable. Feels pretty solid, but I hear it's pretty crappy. But it has a Tiger two in it, and that's two ninety nine at uh, Tiger. Right. Um, what do you guys think? Well, I have an update. He did buy one. Oh, what um, you well, first thing I'll say. I misread it and I was tempted to tell him the color Nook. As a developer, he wants something not too popular. Right. Because he wants to make sure his app has flexibility to work on a whole bunch of stuff, even the crappy stuff. I'd get the Elocity then. What did you what did he get? Well, anything that is not official Google, you will not have an official Google market app on it. So you'll have to push the apps to it with an alternate market, which does, it, it, they all work. Right. What he bought is a Kobe Cryos. Seven oh one five. I saw it at Kmart. He probably what, he get it for one hundred and thirty bucks. He uh, didn't. I, he didn't tell me a price. When I look at it on B and H Photo, <laughs> which they have a lot of electronics, one hundred and forty two bucks. And here's what it says: it has four gigabyte built in flash memory, micro micro SD expansion slot. Doesn't say what it can handle. Wireless internet connection, seven inch touch screen. But you can see in the picture, there's a lot around the edge. So it's actually closer to an iPad size, I believe. Um, 1080p video. It says apps. Oh, man. Ebook reader application, video, photo, music, games, and more. HDMI output. It doesn't say if it's limited like the Droid X from the factory. And then it says automatic orientation detection because I guess they ran out of features. Oh, it's got a hell of a battery, though. <laughs> what, 3,200 huh? milliamp. Wow, I don't, know, big... I, I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, I, I, I saw well, that. I was close to buying. It's only 800 by 480, though. I was close. Really? To, well, then it can't be 1080p video. Um, I was close to picking this up. I saw it at Kmart. I was debating buying it. I looked online. You know, any of these tablets under 200 bucks, they're just not. You can't compare them to iPads and tabs and Zooms. You just can't. But um, there's hack. There is hacker communities for these things. And uh, that's not a bad one. The problem is that those cheap ones, resistive screens. The screens yeah. are yeah. resistive. Yeah. That's what resistive. I, the other problem resistive. with some of these is you don't have your hardware buttons like home, menu, back, right, search. Right, right. It doesn't I, look I, like this I does. did some work for a gal on a couple gin books. They don't mm-hmm. have those buttons. They suck. It's ridiculously yeah. hard to do anything. No, they're on the back on the gen touch, I thought. No, no, this was the Gen book. Oh, the Gen the book. <laughs> the $99 <laughs> net book with Android yeah. on it. Yeah, it was now here's one good was, How was the speed on them, William? Sorry, Dor. They were horrible. Really? It okay. was the worst well, yeah. experience. <laughs> I can figure that. Yeah, um, Caleb, congratulations on your new device. I, I think he made a good choice. Yeah. You can't Same go here. wrong for that price. Well, because he, he definitely wanted something to test, to like stress his application to make sure it ran smooth. So I think this is a good pick, I'll say. And it's not iPad sized door. That's that's uh that's not that big of a border. Well, it's not that small either. It's at least a half an inch, I'd say, on the both of the sides. And on the bottom it looks like almost an inch. Inch okay. and a half. Yeah, tab um, is galaxy tabs like that. Now, even though the screen itself might not be high def with an HDMI port, technically you could pipe out. Oh, HDMI. oh right, right. There you go. You could. Um and the processor is 800 megahertz. And one plus, I got to say, versus a lot of cheap tabs, this actually comes shipping with Android 2.1. A lot of the cheap, cheap, cheaps ship with 1.6. Hmm. 
like yeah, the I don't, A-pad or whatever? I don't think he went wrong with this for the price. The Elocity is 300 so this is half the price. Well, honestly, to me, the color Nook is almost a great price. I think it's two fifty. Um, and that, and, but he said something not popular, so I'll just shut my mouth. Yeah, it's getting pretty popular. Yeah, I, I look at the color Nook, but if I'm gonna if I'm gonna dish out for a Nook, I'm gonna go all the way and get the tab. It's more expensive. I think you kind of found the best of the worst as far as yeah. uh, getting something not popular. That looks like it's something that'd be usable, where you're not gonna break it over your knee, but you could still develop on. I agree. Yeah. And that's the hard thing to find something that's not pro premiere yet is at durable at all. Right. You know? And like that price, you just can't beat that price. All right. Um, I think he sent us another one. Let's check it out here. Oh, I lost my Gmail with that link. Here we go. Going back. And he's looking for a cheaper tablet. Okay, read that one. Here it is. Caleb says, hey, all, this is my second email of the week. Uh, I thought you'd be all interested in this. Hello, Android.com. Let me pull up the link here. He says, this is how to install Ubuntu on the Moto Zoom tablet. Maybe this will be good for Linux for the rest of us as well. Awesome show as always, Caleb. Okay, let me see the link here, and I'll give you guys the URL. It is helloandroid.com. Title of the article is Installing Ubuntu on your Motorola Zoom tablet. Just do a search for that and you will find it. Looks So now you can run Windows on your Motorola Zoom. No, not Windows. No, no, because you throw wine in there. You can do whatever uh, you want. Oh, yeah, right. This might be cool for the Zoom. That would be great. I'm so not impressed with the Zoom. It's just a... I don't like the size. I don't like the form I'm factor. not impressed at all, but I want one now. <laughs> Let's see how fast it runs. Oh, it's got all the freaking roll, scrolling text of the installation. I, I like seeing that. He's typing something in. Let's just zoom into the... Well, see, and that's what I don't like. I, on this page, at least, I don't see details because most of the time what these things do, they don't actually install. They, like, integrate because most of these devices don't understand the EXT3 file format, so they do some kind of weird layer. Really? Yeah, yeah. So but it does like emulation, but it does run though. It runs, but it's at it, it, it isn't at full speed. It's like installing a Linux on your PS3. You're not really installing it. There's a layer yeah. between it. But That's still cool though. He's running open office. He's remoting into it. He's not running it. He's cheating. Oh. <laughs> See, uh, okay. I know what this is. I know what this is. This is like the hack on the Nexus one or the first Nexus phone. You could install the files on the phone, run it on the phone in the background as a VM, and then on the device, you could use a VM client, um, remote desktop client, and remote ah, into it on the device. Screw that. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> if it, it wasn't for it, Dora, I would think this was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it it does technically work, but you will never, because the whole Android stuff is running in the background. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. the part I don't like. And I don't know about you guys. Once in a while, when I load a friggin' flash video in no matter what browser I'm launching, my phone almost chokes and dies. So yeah. I don't like having the whole thing running in the background. Well, thank you, Dor, for dashing uh, our hopes of using doing that. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I'm just like, kidding, man. I'm just and like, here's the, the truth. Thing. On the color Nook, you can run... Um, I want to say honeycomb, but you're really not running honeycomb. You're you're running a extracted honeycomb out of the SDK, so it's an emulation of honeycomb that you're running on so Zoom. Really, no, on the um, color nook. Uh, uh, uh. But there will come a point in time, I believe, very soon, where you will be able to do native install installs on these devices. And I gotta say. That version of Ubuntu number one is not the one to install because it has the regular GNOME menu. I believe you should go for the network, uh, netbook remix or Ubuntu 11.04 with its Unity. I can't stand interface, but it's much more touchpad friendly. Okay. I guess that's why they did that with the Unity. Uh, we won't get into that. We'll save that for the next rest. <laughs> All right. Um, any, uh, any news you guys want to go over before we end off? Door, Timster, or William? No? I don't I, have any news. No problema. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I've been completely out of it. It's okay. You do your thing. Don't smoke. Keep doing your thing. You're okay. 
We're, you're, we're all here for you, Dor. Yeah, and you're on the right track. Me. Yes. All right, Dor, where can people find you if um, you're still alive and, and not locked up for um, killing somebody? Exactly. If you don't know where to find me by now, I don't care. Ponnuts.com <laughs> slash better tech. Thank you. I said it right. You did say it right. Check it out. If you don't know what that is, check it out. It's a little mystery for you. Oh. Timster, how about you? Yeah, uh, you can find me on TeamSpeak. Uh, Podnuts.instantts.net is the host name. In, what in, port? Can you what port? 4160. Wait, uh, wait. You, you can't. New port. New port. Wait a minute. Me and William tried to log on tonight, and we couldn't. No, What's up with well, they're changed, uh, they had to change servers, so there's a little oh. bit of a transition period. Oh, they had so to change servers tonight. But it's back. Or it will be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if you're going to use the uh, Instant TS app that I talked about, um, yes. the same name, so the same server address, same port number, but you have a Telnet port of 10011, and be sure you select TS version 3 on the app, and it'll get you in. Awesome. Dude, I've got the port number is 4201 now, Timster, with the new server. Are you messing with them? No, I'm serious. Uh, no, that's that was the only way I was able to get in. 4201. I yeah. confirmed with Johnny just uh, not too long ago. Wild, he said Wilder, I Wilder, Bear, Wilder Bear says port 4201. All right. Right, but, but okay. I believe it's well, temporary. Either way, if you need assistance, podnot.com slash lounge will be happy <laughs> Thank to help. You, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Mr. Clutch came through for us. We come through for him. We do. Thank I'm, you, sir. I, I, I love the team speak room. Got to check it out. Uh, William, how about you? Liam, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at liamtech.com. That's uh, mail spelled backwards and then T E K. Hey, I like the mail spelled backwards. Ah, didn't hear, didn't know about that last week. Or you can mail me at mail at liamtech.com. <laughs> That's mail spelled forward. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank everyone for watching and listening and streaming. If you want to email us at the show, send the mail to mail at podnuts.com. That's mail spelled forward. At podnuts.com. If you want to send us a voicemail, 7076 Podnut. You call that on a regular phone. We will get the voicemail. We will play it. We will love it. And you will be famous. Um, let me see. Anything else we want to go over? No, not today. Um, next show is going to be start next week. We're going to do a pod, or Linux for the rest of us, 830, followed by a Podnuts roundtable, which are getting quite fun. You guys got to check them out. That's Tuesday. Catch it live right here at podnuts.com. Thank you again, guys, and we'll see you next time.